Today we're going to learn how to make a California roll from acclaimed chef Sang Kim. Hi everyone and welcome to Cravings Food Adventures. Sang Kim is an acclaimed and famous chef. He's behind some of the most popular and modern Japanese restaurants in Toronto. He runs Canada's most popular sushi making class called Sushi Making for the Soul. The details for this and his exhaustive bio are in the description. I met Chef Sang Kim recently at a workshop that I took to make sushi. I took my BFF for her birthday there and we had such an amazing time. We learned how to make a bunch of different sushi recipes. So if you're in Toronto, you really should check them out. Chef, thank you so much for having me here in this much. beautiful restaurant. Thank you. Karen, it is so simple to do at home. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll teach your audience how to make it really, really quick, simple. I call it shotgun sushi. Do you know how the California roll came into being? I'll tell you, there's a lot of um, discussion, has been a lot of discussion in the last year or so about who really invented the California roll. And there's a school of thought that believes that Tojo, the great Michelin star sushi chef out of Vancouver created it, but I think that's apocryphal. The, the origins of California will really go back to California. You have to remember that as sushi went from Hawaii to California, it really kind of sparked in the early 1950s. And what happened during that time was the Japanese um, business people would come from Japan um, into California and they were of course longing for, they were hungry for sushi. The, the sushi and yeah. especially the belly of the tuna, like the, the fattier parts of the tuna, what we call today otoro and chutoro. And, but it was too expensive and um, it was difficult to bring it in from, uh, from Japan. And so what did they do? They saw all of these wagon loads of avocados coming across the border. So what the, the chef did was he decided that he was going to use them very similar type of texture to it, fat content. And so he decided that he was going to use that as a kind of simulated tuna belly. So he put that in there. And originally they started off putting snow crab, like real crab meat. But instead, uh, because it was too expensive, you know, Cannery Row was making, starting, getting rid of all of those uh, parts of a whitefish that's closer to the tail that they couldn't can. And so somebody came up with the brilliant idea of let's make it into a kind of sausage and make it look like imitation crab. And so they would put that in with the avocado, you know, some cucumber for texture. And of course, they would roll it. And I'll tell you, from that day forward, everybody uh, believes that the California roll, being a purely American invention, was really um, a pointing back to the desire of Japanese businessmen for their traditional homeland type of fatty uh, tuna rolls. Now here's the other interesting thing about wasabi. Wasabi has always been traditionally put in the middle of the roll by the chef. Or in a nigiri, you have a, a ball of rice and the chef would swab the wasabi on top of the rice and put his fish on top, right? But guess what? Because of the California roll, a woman walks in to a Japanese sushi bar, it sounds like a bar story, but he walks into this Japanese sushi bar, Tokyo Kaikan, and says, Chef, I'm really sorry, but my son can't handle any heat. So do you mind just putting the wasabi on the side? And, that, and from that day forward, the wasabi was always put on the side wow. of a plate, on, on the side of a, a roll, instead of it being swabbed inside it by a chef. And so, of course, that leads to all kinds of dilemmas. Like, why do people put the wasabi and make that greenish paste out of it with the soy sauce, right? Which affects the way chefs think about soy sauce now. They're not going to uh, blend their own style of soy sauce. They're going to use cheaper styles of wasabi because people are just mixing it in, right? And it's all because of the stories around um, you know, the California oil and removing the wasabi from the California oil. Interesting. Yeah. So Karen, 
shotgun sushi is for people who at home who want to make it, but they don't want to go through all of the complications of making sushi rice done the traditional way and stuff like that. So I have a solution for people who just want it quick and simple at home. One of the things that I tell people to do is I tell them, get this uh, rice. Imagine Uncle Ben's super high, like um, turbo power, right? And made in Korea, they use Japanese grains, right? So short, short grain, white sticky rice. And all you have to do is simply unpeel it to the line, like so, to the dotted line. Then you put it into a microwave for 90 seconds on high. You have perfect rice. Oh my God, that's okay? crazy. And all you have to do then is put the rice into a bowl like this, right? And then you just take what is what the main street, the one that most Japanese restaurants use, because they they too don't want to go through the process of of uh, doing the um, uh, the seasoning. This one is really good. It's called Miss Can, main street kind of brand. And all you do is you're putting it into the rice to taste. And how much how much typically would you put in? Um, it all depends on the flavors. How much do you put in? It all depends on the kind of flavors that you're going to be uh, putting the rice up against. So if you use it, if you're doing a variety of different uh, rolls, then you want the rice to be a little bit more robust. So you want to put more seasoning in it. If you want it to be a little bit more subtle, so a more traditional Japanese style roll, then you want to put less, right? So that it doesn't overwhelm the other ingredients. Now what we are doing is we're. I'm going to show you how to do a classic. California roll, which is an American style. The it's called the Euromaki, and in Japan, all of the rolls are done Hozomaki style, which means that the nori sheet is on the outside. So, with the Euromaki, which is the California roll style, the nori sheet is on the inside, and the rice is on the outside. That's why when you have this bamboo mat, it's got saran wrap on it. So. My conspiracy theory is that the Saran Wrap Company created the California roll because you need to put it rice down. And if you didn't have the wrap, the plastic wrap, what would happen is the rice would stick to the bamboo mat. Right. Okay? So what we're doing is we're taking a half sheet of nori, right? It's, you see the coarse side is the side that the rice goes on. Okay. okay? So you, you're putting it down on the mat. Make sure you got your hands moist. What's really important is because the rice is the most important ingredient, what you don't want to do is you don't want to drown the rice. But you, you have enough moisture on your fingers so that when you pick up the rice, it doesn't stick to your fingers. And then what you're doing is you're just spreading it out. Again, dip your fingers in, wipe most of the moisture off, pick up more, right? And what I like to do I like to put it in the middle and then I like to spread it up and spread it down. The question is how much rice do you put in put on, right? And what I tell people is imagine the rice grains are lying on its side. And imagine another rice grain is lying on its side on top of it. That's about as much rice as you'll need. Okay? okay. With the Euromaki, so in, in other words, this inside out roll that the California roll is. What you want to do is you want to fill up the whole sheet. It's very, very, just fill up the whole sheet. And it's very important that you don't squash the rice grains. And the reason why is because you want the rice grains to best express itself. And what that means is that you don't drown it with too much moisture and you don't squash it. You need almost little air pockets for allow the grains to breathe. That's the best way. Okay? You get two people will make a California roll using the same ingredients, but one of them drowns it with too much water, the other squashes it down, and the other does this, which is allow there to be areas where the rice is allowed to breathe. And with the same ingredients, this one is gonna taste much better. So I have a little trick that I use. So you wanna bring it right down to the bottom edge of the mat, like so. Take the bamboo mat, Oh, you know what? Let's sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on it. Okay? Yum. Yeah. So let's do that. 
like so, right? Classic California roll style. Take the top flap like this. And you want to just gently turn it over. Do not press on it, right? Because remember, the rice has got to express itself, right? And so, California, what is it? It's cucumber, of course. People love cucumber. End to end, down the middle. Let's put some avocado on there. Shirimi, right? So you have sausages. These are the parts of a white fish that they just um, uh, that they don't use in the canning process, and they press it together and make it into a kind of sausage. So this is a fish sausage, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. It's like a cheese stick too. See that? Just going to pull it down the middle like so. Put it on top of the cucumber and the avocado, right? It's a very simple three-step process to roll it, okay? Mm -hmm. You have your thumbs yep. underneath the middle of your mat. You're holding your, with the rest of your fingers, you're holding on to the uh, ingredients so that they don't come out. Mm -hmm. And then you're just letting it naturally roll forward like a wheel, right? And when it touches down, what you should have, you should be able to look down. When the bottom edge touches down, you should be able to look down and see a bit of nori. And that's going to be your seal. Okay? The second part of the process is to massage it. Now, what you're doing is you're not massaging it. You can't imagine that you're massaging it into a perfect circle or a sphere or a cylinder. You have to imagine that what you're doing is you're creating a square. And a square's got four sides, but it can't be hard 90 degree corners. You just got to think. It's got four sides. Right now, so as you massage it into a square, like so, right? Being mindful that you're not putting too much pressure down on the table, like that, so evenly on all sides. Then you have to imagine that the roll right now is lying on its fourth side on the mat. And all you're doing is you're, un you're pulling the flap back and you're helping push it forward onto its fourth side with the flap still out. It's amazing. Flap yeah. should never go under, right? And again, all you're doing is, is creating a, um, a kind of square out of it, massaging it. And then what do you have? You have a California roll, right? Like so. Now, now we'll, we'll cut it on the, you know, without get, letting it get too complicated. What we'll do is we'll just simply cut it on the bamboo mat. I mean, you want to have a cutting board ideally beside you, right? But let's just cut cut it on the uh, bamboo mat. Make sure that the blade is is always wet. Well, I had a fabulous time today with Chef Sang Kim learning how to make this gorgeous California roll that he has now christened the shotgun sushi. <laughs> So look out for it. This looks amazing. And remember, you can make this in your own home. You saw how easy it was to make. Thank you so much for joining me on Cravings with Adventures. Don't forget that I upload new videos every week. So make sure that you're subscribed so you're the first to see it. Also, to make sure to follow me on all of my social channels. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and even Snapchat. Until I see you next time, do take care and make sure to check out the Kimbap video. That is a delicious sushi as well. Take care. Bye.